Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here and this is part seven of our um, hardcover journal. Uh, taking apart a journal from, uh, taking apart a book, a hardcover book from scratch and cutting out all the pages, gutting it and rebuilding it into a useful functional journal. So it is part seven. If you're just watching this for the first time, uh, you're a little bit behind and you'll have to start at, at part one to get caught up. And if you're ready to go for part seven, um, uh, first of all, I'm going to say, how are your books coming along? <laughs> now, some of you have left me messages telling me where you're at with your book. Uh, some of you have agreed with me that your book still looks pretty ugly. <laughs> <laughs> they they do start to get better and as you start to see things uh come together it, you get more and more excited i'm at that stage now where i'm very excited about my my books uh, i'm only going to show you the one in this this video uh possibly i'll show you all of them in the second video i'm not sure it depends on my time and um so for this one we're going to start making some ephemera with all the uh, extra pages that we had left over and uh, some embe embellishments as well. I will show you some methods of cutting up the paper and how we're going to use it. And then I will go on to part eight and show you how I put it into my books. So uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm not going to flip through this book again uh, un until I need to reference something, but um, oh, actually I will. Um, the first thing, I'll, okay, so this is my, my cover page of my signature. I've left my, my uh, fabric ends, uh, can you see them here? You can see this one uh, hanging because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be gluing it uh, onto the outside of the book. So mine are still hanging. Uh, if not, I can cut them off. At this point, anything that you cut off and have leftover bits, even the smallest pieces, make sure you keep it because we're going to be using those for making embellishments, for making clusters, tabs, all kinds of things. So, yeah, I have my front cover and then, you know, I have a blank page and that's just, uh, actually, here we go. Uh, I have a scrapbook page in here and then I have uh, this paging right away on the inside with writing. I want to keep this picture. So the idea now will be to cover this up with uh, paper so that it becomes functional, that I can use it for um, journaling on. And this, uh, you know, it has nice lines in here already, so it's very easy to use this as uh, functional paper. And no matter what I put in here, um, you can still add more embellishments and flips and tabs and all kinds of things afterwards. Now... I'm assuming that most of you have some journaling supplies, like some different kinds of papers, some scrapbook paper, some images. Uh, but I have to consider that some of you don't. Um, so we're making the book, or at least I'm going to make the books on camera with using with what's in the book, uh, what the books come with. Now, I cannot control um, if your book has... Um, not very many images that you can cut out of the book. I can't control if your book um, has, is just pictures. Um, and I don't know what papers you've used to match up your, your book pages, like as far as a blank page. And uh, here, I'm just going to flip to one now. Like I, I had a book where I had this, this uh, library card in here, so I, I used it, but it is also a blank page. Because I can't control all those things, some of this is you will be on your own to figure out how to to uh, add things in and change things. You may have to get another book or uh, go and buy some basic supplies. You know, although I, I do deter from, from doing that, especially if you're trying to recycle and repurpose. Um, but, you know, we all have some kind of scrappy paper, whether it's a paper that comes in the mail, envelopes that come in the mail. Those are all things that you can add into your book quite easily and, and uh, use that for, for decorating and, and embellishing your books. So I'm going to try to keep it limited to that, but I will be using a little bit of scrapbook paper and I will be using some blank pages that 
page, the same kind of pages that I use to put my book together. And so I think if you've gotten that far where you've put some blank pages with your book pages, um, then I know you have this type of papers, whether it's uh, a lined paper, whether it's brown paper bags, whether it's coffee dyed or just blank. I'm going to assume that you have at least that. Now, when it comes to images, if you want to do some spot images in your journal, um, then, you know, there's many, many sources. Um, I have over 200 uh, free images uh, and they're all uh, collage sheets or digital sheets that are individual sheets. Some have different themes, different uh, colors, and um, they're great for cutting out and fussy cutting and making journal cards and tags. I don't have digital kits. I kind of steered away from that. But if you want to look to enhance your book with a digital kit, um, there are several artisans that I can recommend. Um, Caroline's Craft Tree has some great kits. In fact, one of my books, I'm going to be using one of her kits. Uh, actually, I'm going to be using two of her kits in the same book. Um, Artie Mays. Uh, Artie Mays has a huge collection of images that you can buy uh, on her Etsy shop and on coffee. I'll try to remember to link those below, but again, if most of you probably know these people. Um, so, so there's right there, there's some great sources. So I'm giving you free images and my free site. I also have a subscription coffee site where you can purchase additional images, uh, Caroline's craft tree, Artie Mays. And the reason I, I, um, name these two is one Caroline is a, um, collaborator with me on uh, different, uh, YouTube, um, projects. Uh, we work together as far as having, um, interest in, in several different Facebook groups and, um, uh, yeah, she's got some great images. So, so I recommend her. And then Artie Mays also has a huge free select selection. Same with Caroline. She has some free images as well on her coffee site. So both of them offer free images as well as, uh, saleable images. And so I like to, I don't normally like to uh, share where I buy stuff from, not because I don't want to share where I bought it, but I just don't feel that if I'm buying something that I should have to give credit back to the person I'm buying it from. Um, but in both of these cases, they offer free images. So you can go and take for free as well as um, purchase. And so I, I encourage those or I, I, um, advertise for those uh, two places for sure because they offer both uh, and and uh, and I've taken advantage of both of their their free images and so that is the main reason why when I get it for free I definitely want to be able to sponsor back wherever possible and collaborate with them and then Caroline well she's got great stuff and she just happens to be a collaborator with me so so there are others and uh, if anybody would like to uh, uh, share some of their images or uh, give their input on their free images that um, we can include on this this um, uh, video then please uh, step up and and tell us all about your free images and then if i get a chance i'll try and come by and use some of them um, so, so there are sources and I know some of you may not have a printer, um, but maybe you have a, a printer at work. Maybe you have, you can uh, go to your local, um, office stationery company. Uh, you can download the images on your phone or onto a flash drive and go to your local, uh, shops and have them printed. Maybe, maybe you have a friend who has a printer who can print a few images for you. So there are lots of sources for getting images. As far as uh, scrapbooking type papers and pretty papers, you know, your local craft stores, your dollar stores, um, picking them up at the thrift shops, there are opportunities for that as well. So as much as I'm trying to stay within the book uh, for the purpose of teaching this video, I will be enhancing my books with some of those products because... I, I have the sources for it. I have the printers and, you know, I just want to further my, my journals with those items, but that's my little spiel there. So I'm going to get started with the pages of the book and show you how I would cut up all of these leftover pages. Now, again, in my stash here, I have some of those blank pages, the different types of paper that I used to create the, the book pages in my book. And I will uh, use those later on when we get into the decorating and, and um, embellishing. But now it's just about the paper or, or the book pages. 
So I had kind of divided them up into a few categories. Um, one of them being um, what I called base ephemera, uh, which means it's not so much that I would use it uh, for decorating, but I may use it as a base under a journal card or something. And then, excuse me. <coughs> and then I think I have a few uh, questionable uh, pages. And I had some extra pages that I didn't use when I made the journal. Um, and then I have some that are definitely fussy cutting. So we're going to start with those first. And I'll just show you my method and um, kind of take it from there. So this one here has the picture on one side. And it's got some really pretty, um, like a lace background here. Uh, the book is my embroidery book. And so this one, I would definitely, um, I like this image more than, than uh, this one. Uh, but I thought maybe this could be a good flip out on a page. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to use my cutter right here. And just quickly cut out this image. And there we go. Okay, so I've cut out this image. This is an image I want to use in my book. It, it's very pretty on the other side. It's a very light color, so I could use it for writing. If it wasn't, I could, I could uh, glue a piece of, of uh, blank paper onto the back side. I left this little piece here so that I can fold it. And add it into my book as a flip. So I'm going to get the book now. And choose a page that I might want to have a flip on. I could go with this uh, blank page and just add it right there. And it would be a, a little place to flip out. And you've got a place to uh, have some hidden writing and also uh, have a pretty picture on the page that flips out. Later on, we can add some tabs to show that we want to open this. Um, another page might be to uh, put it on a page that has lots of words and stuff on here. I don't mind this tassel. This is in my book, so I don't mind this tassel showing here. And I can add it onto this page. When I add it on, I'm going to glue it to the edge here so that the fold is on this page, not wrapped around because then, then I might have to deal with it on this side. So I don't want to have to have it on that side. I'm going to put it here and then it would open up. And again, it gives you a place to write if you want to write on here uh, and a hidden spot. So I'm going to just pin it in here for now and I will show you that later. And I'm just going to pin it in with a paper clip and come back to that one. Now these leftover pieces, um, this is a pretty piece that could be used for making a little tiny journaling card or a tag. So I'm going to keep that. Um, this one here has automatic instant writing space and it's pretty on that side. So I'm going to fold it down like this in half as straight as I can make it. Oh, that was pretty lousy. I don't think I cut this perfectly straight to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to take my my cutter because I didn't obviously didn't cut it very straight. And I'm just going to trim off the edges here. You will have to listen to my cutter. Okay, so this is a nice little folded card that when you flip it open, it has a writing space. I can also put another piece of paper on top of there and it's a perfect little flip card. Now, if I want, I can turn it into a double tag, sorry, by just cutting the corner. Oh, 
and then using the same piece that I just cut off I can then mirror it onto the other side and I have an instant flip tag that can go over the top of a page uh, all I have to do is cover that on the inside and we are good to go um, it can be further decorated and enhanced and I've got a little tag that I can make in um, I think I'll just turn this right into a tag now if you see that it's got the um, linen print on the one side and on the other side there already is some writing space so I can add a little bit more writing space to the top there yeah and I can see that this is pretty crooked I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit maybe just take that brown off altogether there we go so I just have to put something on top of that. Um, I could I could turn it into a tag by cutting the corners, but I'll just leave it for now until I see what kind of pockets we have. So I'll put those aside. Now this is another piece that's left over. It's that same linen paper, which is really cute. It's got a bit of a rough edge there. I'm just going to trim that off. Another nice piece to fold in half. Yeah, it makes a difference when you cut your paper straight. So this, this is folded on the outside. It has the linen. I can further enhance this when we do embellishing and add a piece of lace on the bottom because this is a book of embroidery. Um, so this would make a really cute little journal card, uh, folded journal card in the, in the journal. Um, it has writing on the other side, but this can easily be collaged over with some book pages and stuff to, um, to make it writable on, on both sides. Um, I can also uh, make it into a little booklet by adding a few page, pages of paper. So that, that will be a side as another piece of ephemera. So now I have these two images. Uh, I did like this tassel. This could be fussy cut out, but... Remember I said she was going to win. I don't know if you remember her. And then I really like this because I just think that would make such a cute belly band in the book. So I'm going to take away the rough edges here first. And then I'm going to trim it off because that's going to be my belly band. And because it's the book that, I, uh, that I've that i been working in, I know that this is the exact right length, that it will go right top to bottom as a belly band on a page. And I really liked her, so I think I would turn her into a... Um, um, I don't know. She could be a flip. I could save all of this red around the edges here and turn her into a flip as well. And all of these things will be further embellished. And because I'm not going to open the book each time to show you where I'm going to put the flip, I'm just going to fold it over. And I know that before I put this in, um, I kind of like this, this image if it's a flip and it opens up to that. I, I kind of like it, but I will put something to cover this up. And, um, you know, that's not very uh, significant, so that could stay as well. I don't think it, it would look bad in the book. So it's just this little piece here um, that could have a label or, or all kinds of things on it. So this is ready. I've folded it. It's going to be a flip in the book somewhere. I'm just going to put it aside. And I have a belly band. Now let's just take the belly band and, and put it somewhere. So going back to this book... Um, I have this beautiful floral on this side. I know I'm going to cover this side with journaling paper. Um, this opens up and it's going to have a flip here. So I could... I could put the belly band there. No, I don't think so. I like this page the way it is. This will be... Um, fixed up after um, just kind of looking through here where I might want to put it how about on this page 
So maybe right there. So in this case, this was one of my pages that I added in. So it's a little bit short or a little bit longer than the, the um, page itself. So I will probably um, trim it down once I'm ready to put it in the book. But for now, I'm just going to pin it in and come back to that part of it later. So this allows um, me to tuck something inside of here. Um, I, although I do lose some of the blank page. Um, I do like this contents page. Maybe I could put it here instead. Then I won't have to trim it. It will fit in the book. It covers up some of this uh, writing that's here. And the writing here is talking about fabrics, embroidery. So I don't think that's a big deal if we leave that and, and uh, put this in the book this way. I still have writing space here and I will have a place to tuck something underneath when I, when I glue this down. So th there will be a spot there. So I'm just going to clip that in and come back to putting it in the book after. So this was the leftover piece. These flowers are cute. Um, it has a blank spot right here. Now it's got writing on the other side, but if we fold this in half, um, this now can become a tag. It's got a beautiful floral print on the front of it. On the back it is blank and it says surface embroidery, but we can cover that with some washi tape or something. Um, so I'm just going to right away, uh, this can be glued shut. Um, you know what else it would make really nice is if I just glue it along the sides and the bottom and put a little dib in here. That looks about even. Now if you don't have a punch to do this. Okay, so now instead I'm just going to uh, glue this shut along the, the side and the bottom and this will become an instant little uh, spot to tuck something in, whether it's some writing paper or another tag or something, but we've made a little opening here at the top. So that's another piece coming up. It's already decorated. I don't even have to put a label. Here's a little spot for writing something on here and then you've got the back side here that you can write on as well. Whoa, this is coming together so easy. Um, <laughs> not all my books are this good. I'm sure of it. So here's my next page. I have this beautiful decoration here. I have a piece that I could fussy cut. There's some blank stuff there. Um, I have some decorations here and a blank spot. I think I like this the best. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with this one, but I'm just going to cut it down for starters. Oh, I know what I'm going to do with this one. All right, I'm going to cut this just below that fussy cut. Just below. Let's just see here. Oh, that worked good. Okay, we'll come back to that one. And now... I think I can probably turn this into a little envelope. Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to fold this over so that the writing, and I'm, I'm taking a little bit of the picture, not much, just a little bit of the picture. And then I'm going to fold this this way just to give me a little tab to glue the two pieces together. And I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So I'll be able to glue that shut. So that will be the front of my um, envelope that I'm making. Now I'm going to turn up this white piece of, of all the pieces at the top or at the bottom, I mean. And then I'm going to turn down this white piece
Okay, so this will be the envelope. Oh, that turned out cute. Okay, so I'm going to open this up now. And this part here is going to be glued down to, to the um, back of the page to make the envelope. And I don't need um, this little square or that little square or that piece or that piece. The easiest way to show you this in my mind is I've made the fold on the bottom and the top. And if you were making a tag, you would just cut from the corner to make a tag and you would cut here from the corner to make the tag and you'd have a tag. But what this is going to do is it's going to show you which pieces have to come out. Does that make sense? So I'm going to take these two pieces out and I'm going to leave the tag top. Okay. So just on a slight angle, I'm going to go right up to that corner and, and cut out that piece. And here the corner is already made, so I'm just going to cut across. So again, when you fold this, now all I have is a spot here that I'm going to glue closed. So now let's look at the top of the tag and do the same thing. We've made the fold in, in the whole thing uh, where we want the top part of the, the envelope, the envelope flap. So I'm going to pretend I'm making a tag. I'm going to cut that corner off. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to cut that corner off going to the corner and if you open this up you can see that this is the, the top of the tag so this is the piece we don't need and this piece we don't need there are other ways of doing it but because I cut it kind or I folded it kind of as just a little fold on the one side it could be confusing for some people as to what comes out uh, but if you look at it that that's the whole top of a tag uh, whereas these ones don't have a whole tag I hope that makes sense. And again, I'm just going to cut that out. Right up to that corner. And same with this one. On a slight angle, I'm going to cut to that corner. So now, when we go to close this, first the big flap, glue that down, and then glue up the bottom, and you have an instant envelope um, with a flap, with the top flap. Now, you can uh, get fancier and make this into a policy envelope where you actually make a, a little, um, you can either use a brad or you can use a little round circle of uh, paper and then make another one down here. But I'll save that for when we're actually doing the embellishing part of this. So right now it's just that we've made an envelope now I have a belly band that this can go under or we can, we can um, have it go into a pocket later, but that was made out of that one piece. Now all these little bits here I'm going to discard only because I know I have lots to work with. So then it goes back to this piece that was left over that I cut off. Let's have a look at it. Okay, it's blank on this side, which is on this side. So this could make a really cute little folded card. Um, very easily. Let's just have a look here. We could fold it or we could fussy cut this out. I, I'm going to save that blank paper for making um, a couple of labels. I'm going to cut, fussy cut this flower out instead. Now I'm not cutting right to the flower. Some people like to. I'm just going around the the uh, flower loosely, um, leaving a, a little bit of white around it. And I'm not going to fussy cut every piece. I'm going to just show you how I do the one. You guys can look at other people how they fussy cut or you can fussy cut on your own off camera. Um, but this one I will do for you, just for you to see. I move the paper, not the scissors so much until I run out of scissor. Just 
Just checking to make sure I'm still in frame. I should have this um, paper cutter on my desk all the time. It looks like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Now, some of you may not have images that you can fussy cut out, but you may have words um, that you can cut out. You need to look at each individual page as to um, how you can use it. And sorry that this is taking so long. I won't do any more online um, while I'm filming. I'll do it afterwards and then show you the cutout pieces. Now, I will keep this for now because I have a nice blank piece of paper here to work with. Um, this can be all kinds of things from little notebook paper to uh, labels to uh blank uh, collage pieces that you can collage onto the back to give you a, a blank writing space. So don't be in a hurry to throw it out. This can also be the base for a note card or a journaling card. So until you know what you want to do with it, I, I wouldn't throw any of it away. And even if you don't use it in this book, you can still make ephemera for other projects. So there's one of my little fussy cut flowers. I'll just finish it off here. Now this can go in the book as a simple page element for decoration. That's all you need is to glue it down and it's decorated your page. Um, I'm not going to put it in there right now until I'm more serious about what I'm doing. I've just got those two pieces clipped in and we're going to keep going. So on this next one, I have a whole page picture. It didn't make the cut uh, only because I didn't have enough room to fit it in the book. Otherwise, it's a very pretty picture. I love the roses. But on the back, it has this beautiful uh, image here of this woman. And she's doing embroidery. So I'm going to keep her for sure. And then we'll see what's left over with the page afterwards. Okay, so I'm just going to take it to about there, I think. It looks like it's about right. Yep. And now, if this was a flip out, ooh, this is very interesting. Okay, if we made her into a little flip, let's first fold this in. So I leave all these margins on until I decide what I'm going to do with her. Now, all of this stuff that I'm doing, yes, some of it, I it's automatic. It comes very easy to, to figure out. I didn't do this very straight. To figure out how to use it, only because I've done this a lot. But it is all on the fly. I'm coming up with this as I go along. Uh, but if this was uh, glued into the book and I have her picture... I can then fold this part over. I'm just going to make a little. Hopefully I did that straight. Okay, so this is how it. Oh, that's not very straight. Sorry about that, guys. There you go. Okay, so this is how it would look in the book. Um, and it's on a little hinge. It flips open. And you see her. And then you've got a little writing spot. I can, again, cover this up with a label. But I think this is the information here about her. Uh, the Victorians were great inventors and loved gadgets at, at as this elaborate embroidery frame shows. Yeah, as this. Sorry, I can't read without my reading glasses on. <laughs> Um, but so that's a possibility. So let's have a look and see how it would sit in the book. If I find a page that I can put it on. Maybe this brown page because it's kind of uh, basic. 
So it would get glued onto this page here with the flip being on this part so that we can further um, uh, reinforce it. So then it would open up to that picture and have one more little um, note spot on there as well. I think I'm just going to pin this one in here because I like it. So this is this one is staying and it will get further enhanced um, when I get to that page in the book. I hope this is interesting for you. <laughs> So now I have this one here. I love this image. Oh, but I love these better. And then I love those. So these would get fussy cut out for doing spot embellishments. Uh, like I showed you the little flower. Um, I would use this the same way. I could use it for making a um, snippet or a little cluster or something. Um, this might be really cute if I have a piece of linen fabric underneath it. Um, something like some cheesecloth underneath that. Ooh, that's going to be really cute. So I'm going to fussy cut those out afterwards. These will make great journal cards, but they'd also make gorgeous pockets because they're, they're just the, the perfect size for pockets. So maybe I'll uh, cut this down and show you my, my uh, pieces as we go along here. Okay. That looks like it's about right. A little bit crooked, but I will will fix it up afterwards. So these are going to both be pockets in the book. You know, I can probably just cut it with scissors. I think I will. I'll just cut it out with scissors here. And I will do the other one afterwards, but let's just straighten this one up here. And then taking my half circle punch, I'm going to just make a little dib in there. Like that. And I have an instant little pocket to glue on three sides. Uh, to put in my book. Um, this one I would definitely have upright. This one could go other ways, so I could even have it as a side pocket this way. So I'm just explaining those things to you, and then I will show you my finished results afterwards. But that's what those are going to be as pockets. Now, for these little ones here, again, I can probably just cut this out by hand really quickly. So this too can also be a little page element, but I did like the cheesecloth underneath it. So if I just cut up a little piece of cheesecloth, this would be really cute as a spot element or cluster in a book. So let's find a nice page that it would go on. I've got this scrapbook page here that's going to have a little flip or, or tuck spot. If I just tuck that on here with some cheesecloth, it would be really, really cute. Not much to do there. Just glue it down and it's just a really pretty element for the page. So that's a possibility. Or I could even tuck it in the corner on this, this um, picture page as a little element. Mm, I really like it there. But again, I'm not going to worry so much about decorating in my book as, as much as I'm just showing you different options and I will decorate my book off camera. So that I'm going to put aside, but I'm going to put it with this one and I'm going to put it with the cheesecloth to remind me that's what I want to do. So now this one says Victorian embroidery. I would actually keep that. I, I kind of like that little thing. So I'm just going to trim it down. And um, just set it aside as a possible, it's not very straight, is it? I don't know why I'm cutting crooked today. Um, but as a possible uh, 
spot element, I can uh, further enhance this uh, with uh, inking or or um, uh, painting or or just add some some uh, fabric to it as well. So that I'm going to keep. Now going back to those pieces that I cut off, this one had still the pretty flowers on it. Uh, we've kind of lost her and, and it doesn't look very nice that she's cut off in this picture. So I think I'll just cut this to that size and uh, turn this into a journaling card by adding um, some type of a blank paper on the back side. So I'm going to trim it down. And it really doesn't need much on the other side. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, some uh, blank page uh, glued down onto here. And then I'm going to trim the four corners because I always like to cut off those little nubs. So that it looks more like a journaling card. And so this will be ready to go in the book once I cover up the back side. How are we doing so far? Now I have this leftover piece here. Like I said, she's really kind of out of the picture, but there is this nice little piece of tapestry here. And there's also this coppery gold. These would make great little labels, or I could fold it in half and make a little mini something. But right now I'm just gonna set it aside with those other pieces that are left over and see what happens. This one here, I have um, I have this little spot element here that I could use. I have this tiny little element. I have the word beadwork that might be useful. Oh, but on this side, I have a tapestry. So this is what I'm going to keep. Um, it this would make a really cute uh, folded notebook. It's just the right size for that. So I am going to line this up. I think I might take a little bit off of the edge of it just to make sure that I cut off straight and cut the white off. Good. Okay. And now do the same thing. I'll trim off the little tiny bit of it. That got me quiet for a little bit, didn't it? And then one more. Okay, so I have this uh, tapestry all cut out now and I'm just going to fold it in half. And I think this is going to turn into a little notebook. I'm just gonna add uh, half a dozen pages in here. I think I'll just keep it with the writing in it. I don't mind that at all. I think that looks kind of cute uh, having that element in there. You know, I could cover this up with something afterwards if I have leftover pieces or I want a collage on here. Um, there's lots of opportunity, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to stitch a little notebook in here. So I will probably just take five or six pages uh, and then do a quick stitch on the sewing machine. But you could also do the same uh, notebook idea, the pamphlet stitch, just like we did into our books and stitch it in with a needle and thread. Um, so that's entirely up to you. You can also um, just gather all the, the pages together and staple it. So, so there are lots of options if you've got a long arm stapler that you can staple it. You can also um, uh, cover this with paper if you want and then make uh, two little holes in here uh, using your hole punches and then have a ribbon tie uh, your papers in. So there are lots of options for this little notebook so I'll wait till I'm at that point when I get to it. The only other thing I might want to do is just take the, again the, the little nubs off so that it's a little bit more finished and um, it looks more professional, like a little bit more um, finished looking. Now, this next one is that blank page that's already white on the other side. This is automatically a tag 
a, a uh, folded journaling card or a plain journaling card. And I can probably get several things out of here. So let's start by cleaning it up. And I'm going to take it down to eight inches. Okay, so now it's got a nice straight edge on both sides. Um, it is longer, I think. Yeah, it's a little bit longer than 11 inches. So I'm going to trim it down to 11 inches. Because that's what we're kind of used to working with. And this little strip that I've just cut off now is now full washi tape. It can be full washi tape. It can be used in a cluster. There's all kinds of opportunities. So this gets kept aside to use for that purpose. Now, um, standard journaling cards are usually five and a half uh, by, by four or four and a quarter. So I'm going to cut off two journaling cards right off the hop. And so I'm going to, I cut it down. It was down to eight, right? Yeah. So I'm going to cut this down to four. And this will now be two journaling cards that go uh, into pockets or into tuck spots. Again, uh, they're blank on the side, the back side, so they are ready to go. So I'm just going to take and, and cut off all the little corners. This just helps so that they don't get so dog-eared as well. And gives it a nice little finish. Same with this one. Now, when I go to put these in the pockets, I can also uh, put a little tab on it to to um, um, use to pull pull the tag the uh, journaling card out. But these are ready to go. Look at that! Just instant, easy peasy. Now, this other piece, I would like a. This is quite wide. It's five and a half inches wide because I could make two more journaling cards out of it. Um, yeah, five and a half. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down to three and a half from five and a half. So that's two inches. Um, so two inches. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to cut off a strip at four and a half inches. And then I'm going to cut off a strip at three and a half inches. And that gives me uh, two more uh, possibilities of washi, faux washi, or little bits that I can add into the journal. And then I'm just going to take this. How long? It's eight inches long. This is a tall book, so we do have room for tall things. I'm going to leave it like that, but I want to remember that it's going to be a, a tag, so I'm just going to cut off one corner. Some of you have those little things uh, that you've made where you can um, uh, have the different size of, of tags and just line it up with a piece, you know, like a little piece of plastic or credit card, old credit card. I just do it this way. I don't usually... I don't even measure. I just cut it and, and say, oops. Um, but, but I don't worry if it's not perfectly matched. I just adjust it if I have to. Uh, but this is now a tall tag, um, that could write a tall tale. Um, and I'm just going to either hole punch or put a little tab on there because my book is very tall. I can have a tall tag like this in there. So I'm just going to, again, cut those little corners down. Now, what's nice about this is this ties in the book itself because these were part of the original um, end pages. And I still have the original end page here on, on each side of the book on, on the inside cover. And for the most part, those are going to be staying. But this just ties the colors in. And if you can imagine using this as a piece of washi tape, where this word says introduction, I can just take and cover that with a with this as well and, and just finish it off. Um, 
so so all of this now helps to blend in in with the book so de depending on where i'm going to put these things um, i can have different tags or use the the uh, full washi um to to um just give spot elements like this is a great page where I could add a piece in and it it just enhances the page a little bit more um, but again I don't want to play with that on camera I will I will uh, take time to do this elsewhere so I mean it's something that could be added onto the side of the page just to give you a little bit more of that color and um, help to blend all of these in now I have this library card here although this might be a little tall for here it looks like it would oh, I may have to trim it no it fits in there very nicely so that might be a spot where it goes totally did not plan that um, you watch me think about this, but, but it will fit in there nicely. So that might be where it stays. I think I'm just going to leave it there. So now, um, let's go back to the pieces that I've cut off. I just have this one piece left. Uh, there's nothing significant on here except for the word beadwork in this little beadwork in this little square. No, I'm not in a hurry to cut that up for, for to use for that. It may become the base of a journaling card uh, if I don't have enough cards. So it's just going to go in the pile of offcuts that I have. This next page, um, I really like the B, the uh, Victorian embroidery. And this is the one that had all of the um, book information as far as copyright on it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it first so that it doesn't interfere with, with the B. So that takes me to the B there. And I'm going to fold this in so that doesn't interfere with the B itself. Now this is just my personal thing. I like to honor the the um, the book artist or or, um, or company that published the book. Now because I fold this around the B, I'm going to have to trim a little bit here off and maybe trim that off as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So that now. It's still a little bit tight. I'm going to cut a little bit more. You can see I don't really measure. I'm just uh, doing it. Okay, so now that folds in there nicely. If I would fold it straight, right? I love that little bee. It's still not quite straight, but we'll fix that up. Um, I love that little bee. So this would open up, have the copyright information, which I wouldn't uh, take away from. And I can either flip this into the book. Oh, that might be an idea too. I'm going to fold it on this line. So you can see I'm just doing this as I go along. There's no real uh, method to my madness. Okay, so if this were glued onto a page, it would say Victorian embroidery. It would hinge, be hinged open. There would be the B. We've got some writing space. We've got writing space there. Um, it would open up again, and you'd have the other side. So you can play around with adding things in here. My personal preference is to leave all the copyright information, but I do have another folded little tuck that I can use. I may have to just uh, think on this a little bit further to make sure it doesn't get in the way with anything, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, again, I might have to trim some of this off or fold it in one more time. But so far, I'm liking this as a as a spot in a, in a book um, to, to flip open. And it, it just adds a little interest and still allows me to see all that copyright information. Um, and then it's visible from both sides. So let's have a look in the book to see. Now, I most likely will want this at the beginning, uh, which just makes sense. So maybe we'll put it behind her. 
Um, not sure I'm happy with it covering that picture. Um, maybe we'll go one more over and put it there. So then it doesn't take away from the, the um, blank page itself. And we'll open up completely in the book. I'm going to clip it there, but it may move. I'm not 100%. Uh, and again, I don't want to waste your time showing you this while the camera is rolling. I'm running out of time. And I'm going to continue going through the book. Um, we have done some... some um, let's just see what we've got here. We've done some flips, we've done some tags, we've done some journaling cards, we've made some little notebooks. I will continue off camera until I have them all done and I will uh, put them into my book. And I will start to show you where I've covered up the pages uh, that have writing and how to cover them up. You'll get to see all that in part two. So I'm going to end off right now and uh, go on to part two and get, then get back to you with, with the finished results. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Part two is actually part eight. Sorry.